Hello, everyone. This is another episode of Fire Breathing. Rob, please like and subscribe to our interviews. We interview amazing people all over the country that do amazing things, uh, whether it's sports, politics, or other lifestyle issues. So thanks so much for listening. Please subscribe. And if you're listening to us on another platform, thanks so much for that. It's honestly truly an honor to interview my next guest. And this is Kelly Lynch. And She's one of the top softball players in the country right now, so that's why it's an honor. Uh, Kelly is also a sophomore at University of Washington, and she won the 2018-2019 Gatorade Player of the Year over in Georgia. Kelly, thanks so much for coming on the program. Truly an honor, and I appreciate this. Yeah, thank you so much. It's nice to be here. All right. And you've, you've won many other awards. I just didn't want to go down the list because it's very <laughs> lengthy. So we're going to move a little bit into the interview. So Kelly, first, can you tell the viewers, because we have men and women that do watch this program or listen on the air, radio rather, mm -hmm. uh, how did you grow to love the sport of softball growing up? Um, so I started playing when I was super young. I started playing um, right before I turned four. So um, my sister, Katie, is four years older than me, and she actually is the one who got me into softball. So she kind of paved the way, and I decided I wanted to play because obviously I'm watching my big sister, and I wanted to be just like her. So that's kind of how I got started with softball. And she played in college, too, at, what was it, Kennesaw? Is that yeah, right? Yeah, she played at Kennesaw State in Georgia. Right. Yep. right. So let's roll as we keep rolling into this interview. Can you speak about the recruiting process and what made you choose Washington? Because obviously we all know how great Washington is at softball. And as a person that's in Orlando, Florida right now doing the show, I've watched Washington many times on TV in the College World Series, and also they've played uh, my Florida Gators a couple of times and be beat them uh, sometimes with that. So can you speak about the recruiting process and, like I said, what made you choose Washington? Yeah, I had kind of an interesting experience with the recruiting process. Um, I was originally committed to Auburn University in Alabama and committed there in eighth grade, I want to say, maybe ninth grade, oh, wow. and then they had a coaching change over there, so I was kind of filling out um, all of that and kind of planning my next steps forward of what I wanted to do. And I had a best friend that I went to high school with who will be a freshman at Washington now, but she was committed here to play softball. And um, once I kind of decided I wanted to open up my recruiting again, I kind of came with her to Seattle just to check it out and see what it had to offer. And I ended up just literally fallen in love with the campus, the coaches, the people here, and came out on another visit by myself and decided that this is where I wanted to be, so. So that's and Lily, right, that you played Yeah, that with? was Lily, and this was okay. just um, my senior year, so. Right, oh, wow. Okay, yeah. so let's talk about this. So you're in, uh, you know, I grew up in Rhode Island. I was in kind of that small town atmosphere like you grew up in, around 30,000 some odd people uh, that live in the town where you're from, same as where I grew up. Uh, you know, can you talk about that? Like going from that small town atmosphere, was that a big adjustment going to like such a big city like Seattle where, you know, it's totally different. You talk about the climate, obviously that big city lifestyle, plus you're so far away from home. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely different and it's come with its difficulties, but um, I think the cool thing about coming from a small town is now that I am out here, um, yeah. they really like embrace me, I guess. And it's just awesome to know that the support system that I have and, you know, everyone that's keeping up with me and watching me, even though I'm on the other side of the country, but I think the main thing for me was kind of like finding my own like family feel out here. And I've been able to find that on the team. I mean, we're just like one big family. So um, even though the adjustment was hard at first, I kind of um, eased in pretty quickly and used to the Seattle lifestyle now. But yeah, definitely a little bit of a change for sure. <laughs> I understand. So this is Kelly Lynch here on Fire Breathing Rob. As we continue on into the interview, you know, you played at such a high level in high school, also playing on the USA team. When was that first moment where you said, hey, this is big time softball, especially playing at such an amazing school like Washington? Yeah, um, you asking like in general in any time in my life or specifically? Yeah, I, well, yeah that's fine. Um, 
Yeah, I think I've had a few instances where I just kind of like stepped back and was like, wow, like this is really happening, you know. I think the first big one was probably my state championship with my high school. Um, That was the first time our school had ever won. So it's kind of a surreal feeling. And then winning PGF for travel ball, I mean, that was like the craziest thing ever, you know, being on TV for the first time, playing the sport. And then uh, when I got the opportunity to play for USA, I was just completely, completely mind blown. I mean, that's the dream of almost everyone, you know, to be able to put on the red, white, and blue. And I think, yeah, definitely. I kind of looked back and was like, wow, like this is kind of everything I've been working for. And then now that I'm up here at Washington, I'm just kind of living out the dreams I had as a little girl, you know, since probably I was six years old. So yeah, definitely gets to real feeling and goosebumps all the time when I look back and think about it. So. Well, Kelly, let's talk about last year. You played and you started your first collegiate game in Georgia. So you're back home. You start against Ohio, win that game. How was that? Oh, yeah, for sure. I had a ton of family and friends that came out to support me. And I just feel like the luckiest girl ever. But, yeah, I mean, how cool is it that, you know, I choose to go to a school on the other side of the country and (laughs) they make it a, a big deal to come to Georgia so people could see me play. So it was super special. That's awesome. So going into this year, obviously this was your first year playing at uh, UW as a freshman. And so the year ends as a seven-game winning streak. You guys are second in the country, and it looked like another great year going into that College World Series down the road, you know, finishing up the year. (laughs) Kelly, can you tell the viewers about when you found out that the season was canceled and how, you know, college life changed in general with this coronavirus? Yeah, I was actually hitting with Morgan Flores one morning, and I think we were about, the series we were about to start was against Utah, so me and her were just sitting in the batting cages one day, like, getting some reps in before, um, I think we had a meeting or practice or something, and um, I remember Coach Char came in and just kind of, like, told us, like, hey, guys, like, at first, I think they told us we were going to be done for two weeks for sure, like, it was a two-week thing that, um, and then they were going to kind of reevaluate and see where things were. So it was kind of like so rushed, like everyone started buying plane tickets like two weeks because in the middle of season, we don't really get time off. So it was like a good opportunity for us to see our family. Like nobody really knew what was going on. Obviously, Seattle was kind of a hot spot towards the beginning. And so I remember being like, hey, mom, like I called my mom. I was like, I don't know what to do. Like, do I buy a plane ticket? Do I wait it out up here? So I was kind of like frantically trying to figure out what I was going to do, what my next moves were, because it's a little harder to buy a ticket across country on a plane last minute. It gets a little pricey. So I trying to figure out what to do with all that. And then um, we got the news that the whole season was canceled. And for a while, it was obviously super devastating because we didn't know if our seniors were going to be able to come back or yeah. um, if anyone was going to be able to get their um, eligibility back or anything like that. So I think at first it was kind of like just shock that it was like, this is really happening. And it kind of still is that way. I mean, I feel like we're living in kind of like an alter world with all this craziness going on, but we're just kind of taking it day by day and we're getting prepared for this season just like we would any other and doing it to the best of our abilities with what we have right now, so. But with the people that were seniors, the the girls that were seniors, what happens with them? Do they get that eligibility back? Yeah, so NCAA granted an extra year of eligibility for, I believe, all spring sports. So at that point, it's kind of up to like the player coach on if they want to come back or if they would be able to come back and all that kind of stuff. So we're very, very fortunate that our seniors, we have four last year and they're all going to be back this year. So we're super happy about that. Yeah. So can we talk about how it's affected your life right now with this coronavirus and even your workout schedule? Because, you know, a lot of gyms weren't open for quite a long time, so it's hard to work out. I don't know if you have a place where you can hit or if you could go to back to your high school and hit or even hit at UW if they close that down. How did that all work? Right. So I actually just got back to school on the 1st, August 1st. So Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of an interesting process, but we have to get obviously tested for COVID when we come in and then we get some blood work done and um, get our physical done and all that kind of stuff. And then we have to quarantine for seven days, no matter what your results are. And then at the end of that seven days, you'll be able to go on campus and use the facilities to work out and kind of that kind of stuff. So when we go to work out, we go in groups of five, no more than five. So uh, definitely a lot of planning going on and um, 
this is like during summer right now. So our team doesn't necessarily have to be up here. So the more, um, when the more girls come in, it'll be obviously the playing will get harder because in a room there can only be five people. So right now we can, if we're in the weight room, only five of us can be there. If we're on the field, like there can only be five of us on there. So a lot of planning, but um, I think the school's doing such a good job of trying to make sure that we get back to whatever this new normal is going to be like as soon as possible. So they're really making the transition um, not seem as kind of like drastic and insane as it really is. So yeah, you I'll, kind of have to like think ahead. about if you like, if I want to go hang out with someone, it's just not really realistic for me anymore to like be able to go hang out with friends, you know, last year that I always hung out with or anything like that, just because you don't know who they were around. And right. if say I get Corona, then that's selfish of me because everyone on the team is going to have to sit out, you know, because I have it. So definitely won't be your typical college lifestyle for a while, but Again, this is Kelly Lynch. She is a superstar over at UW, and I'm not pushing her up. She is one of the top softball players in the country. So how did you press on after your dad's passing? Yeah, I think um, it kind of like fueled my fire. Um, my dad always wanted me and my sister to play D1 college softball. That was kind of like our dream that we all shared together. Like he wanted it for us and we wanted it for ourselves. So I think after he passed, like kind of seeing my sister persevere through that because she was in high school at the time, which it's like a hard time to lose a parent and um, she persevered and ended up getting, you know, a D1 scholarship. And I was like, wow, like I really want to do that. That's what I want to do. And um, I think it made me work a lot harder and kind of open my eyes up to um, like, what are my passions in life and how do I want to remember and kind of like hold his memories tight to me. And softball was just always a place I could do that. So I know your dad has had a huge impact on your life and I know he still does. How has uh, advice that he's given you and even his spirit that lives on in you, how has that affected you day to day? Do you use that to basically power you day to day before games and even just general days? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think there's a lot of things I carry with me from him, whether that was just like small memories we did or like I was saying, playing catch on the softball field or doing whatever. And I actually have his um, – death date tattooed on my right arm my pitching arm um right on my forearm so that when I'm on the field I'm able to kind of look at that and just kind of like center myself back in the moment and yeah absolutely I mean there's tons of stuff that I'll always remember of him just like little things he told me or memories we have but I remember when he was in hospice before he passed he told me and my sister to always lead and never follow and I think not necessarily like talking about softball but just life in general that's something that um I'll always remember like to not follow in the footsteps of others and kind of create my own path and be who I want to be. So yeah, absolutely. There's just stuff like that that I'll always hold on to. That's great advice. Uh, but, uh, softball's back in the Olympics now and we see there's a professional U.S. league that, you know, travels around in the summer too. So with that said, do you feel like softball is on the rise again? Yeah, I really feel like softball has grown a lot over the past few years. I mean, um, even just looking at, like, social media, like, Haley Cruz and, you know, Jazz Seavers having, you know, I think at this point, like, hundreds of thousands of followers is, um, like, super, super good for our sport and just kind of, like, getting our names out there. And I think, um, I mean, I'm not sure about all the numbers, but I think there's, like, more views on the World Series, like, every year. It's just, like, continuing to increase. And um, I can't speak for all, but our fan base here at Washington is, like, so awesome. And um, they know, you know, our names, which is, like, um, some women's sports just I feel like aren't always like that and aren't always like super supportive and we have like the best fans and um, the best atmosphere and yeah I would say softball's definitely grown a lot over the past few years and hopefully continues to get on be on that increase so well to be honest you guys kick ass every year so <laughs> <laughs> so, they, so they for sure should know your names uh, but anyways as the last question like I said before we go into the fun questions if you do have a season this year uh, Kelly what is the outlook on the team and can you speak about new recruits coming in do you know anybody I'm sure you met some with you know visits last year yeah um, I can kind of speak on like a, a personal relationship Mm -hmm. um, with the freshmen coming in because unfortunately I haven't been able to watch all of them play um, mm -hmm. travel ball or anything but yeah I mean we're gonna be returning everyone we had last year so we should be super strong again and then we're adding 
we'll have 24 this year. So I think we're adding like four or five maybe. And all the freshmen are awesome. Um, I had the opportunity to kind of tag along with them when they came on their official visits last year. So I got to meet all of them and hang out with them for a while. And obviously, like we were talking earlier, Lily Agins in that class that I went to high school with. So super excited to see her up here, like kind of help her make the transition that I had to go through. So yeah, I mean, I'm super excited. Like I said, we're returning everybody and adding more. So it should be an awesome season and we're excited to get back after it. All right, so let's get into the fun questions now. Uh, we had enough of the <laughs> regular softball questions. This is what people do want to know. And I do appreciate all your time today, Kelly. It means a lot. Uh, let's talk about this. How do you get pumped up for the game? Um, how do I get pumped up for the game? Well, I normally travel with Spark, which is like, I think it's like an organic kind okay. of energy fueler thing. But yeah, Spark or, or coffee for sure before a game. And then... Um, I don't know. I mean, I think that I dream so much of playing college softball that now, like, before every game, you know, I'm just like, oh, my gosh, I can't believe I'm here. This is happening. Like, I'm so excited. So, I don't know. I get super excited before the games anyway. But, yeah, I definitely need caffeine. <laughs> what do you like to do in your free time when you're not playing softball? Yeah, well, now that I'm back at school, um, mm -hmm. me and my housemates, I live with a couple other girls on the team. And sure. um, it's been super, super hot here, actually. So, we've been <laughs> going to the lake and kind of like socially distancing, of course, and um, tanning at the lake, going for like a swim when it gets too hot. So we've done that, which is super cool. And then last year I didn't have a car here and I didn't, me and Jadlin, my roommate, didn't get the opportunity to come up earlier because we were playing with USA. So we didn't really get to explore um, much of Washington State or Seattle in general at all. So um, planning out, I have my last day of summer school on Thursday. So I'm planning out some um, cool hikes I want to do and I mean, just hanging out, all my best friends up here on the softball team, so when we're not practicing, we'll hang out and do something, but yeah, I mean, just hanging out with my friends, like living the good life, enjoying the sun, and all that right now during the summer, so. All right, getting that relaxation time, and I hear yeah. you. I know it's yeah. a busy time, softball season. Uh, what is the toughest at-bat you ever had? Anybody specifically you pitched against, and you knew that it was always going to be a tough at-bat? My toughest at bat. Actually, one does come to mind. Um, okay. When I, whenever, when uh, I played travel ball with my PGF team, I remember it was the last out, and it was actually Maya Brady. She will be a sophomore at UCLA this year, but um, mm. uh, she's a big name, and I kind of knew that going in. And they were a SoCal team from California, so she was the last out, and bases were loaded with two outs, and she had already hit, I think, like a double off of me earlier that game, and was I mean the best hitter in the country at the time so yeah I was super super probably nervous about that <laughs> it gives me kind of goosebumps thinking about it but yeah I think um, a huge thing though is even when you're facing someone and you know they're super big and obviously a good hitter but I mean that can be anybody um, a name can be big and just for the purpose of the name being big you know so I think yeah. it's important to kind of take a deep breath and one pitch at a time so I can I mean obviously remember like big people that I pitched against and was probably like more nervous than others but at the same time I kind of try to just take a deep breath and take it one pitch at a time so so we'll keep going through this uh favorite place you've traveled to um probably Paris oh wow yeah. now was this for softball or just for fun Yes, everywhere I travel is for softball. <laughs> okay. It was on the um, USA Junior team. We played out in France. Oh, wow. so it was super, super cool. Yeah. Awesome. Favorite song and kind of music? Um, I listen to all kinds of music. I would say I have an eclectic music. But um, I would say, what have I been listening to right now? I've been listening to a lot of alternative right now. I'm really into the Lumineers, so I would say their recent album yeah all right so I know you played basketball and you've stopped a little bit in high school do you still got some game in what position did you play oh gosh in high school I played my freshman year and I guess I was kind of a wing maybe post okay. sometime but um I mean I could probably I could probably dribble and shoot around if I was going to play a little game but no you can hold your own then yeah, I haven't played since freshman year, but oh, I love basketball. It was always fun. What are the keys to becoming a great softball player and an athlete in general? Um, I think it's um, a lot mental. I think mm -hmm. that 
mental toughness is a huge thing and having the mentality to kind of push through, especially at the college level when, you know, everyone you're surrounded with is everyone's the best at their sport. You know, everyone's at the top of their game. And um, I think you have to have like a super, super dedicated and strong mentality of and good idea of kind of like who you want to be, like I was talking about earlier, to push yourself because it is kind of hard sometimes, you know, like mm -hmm. nobody wants to go in at, you know, and do extra work in between classes and dinner or whatever. And so I think a mentality is a huge part of it because, um, you know, if you're training, the success on the field is going to come and yeah. mentality is a huge, huge part of it, which I learned last year. So, so Kelly, what do you want to do after your softball career is over? Yeah, um, I right now I'm majoring in communication, so I'm not sure um, job route exactly what I want to do yet, um, but I have some time to think about it, thank goodness. Um, but yeah, I mean, I would love to keep playing ball. I think, um, like you said, the pro league's growing, and I'd love to be a part of that, and um, I guess kind of wait out and see about the 2028 Olympics, because, you know, that's been like my big, big, big dream, and um, just to be able to say that I gave it a shot would be pretty cool, so probably try to um, keep playing until 2028. So we'll see. Sounds like a plan. Uh, as we end the interview, and this is Kelly Lynch, softball player at University of Washington. Can you tell the viewers where they can find more about you, where they can follow you on social media? Yeah, I'm on Instagram, uh, Twitter. I have a Facebook if you want to add me. <laughs> okay. um, but yeah, I think I think my Instagram is just Kelly, like, underscore Lynch. And I believe my Twitter is Kelly Lynch 27. And then um, UW Softball in general has a Instagram and Facebook and all that kind of stuff, too. So that's a great resource just to kind of keep up on, like, especially this year with all the uncertainty, like our schedule and stuff like that. Cool facts about us. So, yeah. Well, Kelly Lynch, thanks so much for coming on the program. Greatly appreciate your time tonight. Or today. Yeah, it was nice to meet you. Thanks for having me.